Hello everybody, I'm Nishant Universal here. I just wanted to say two things before this video starts. I noticed that my Alice Madness Returns video got a lot of attention. I just wanted to say, don't worry, it is coming out. I just had to make room for two more videos. I'm going to make a part three and beyond, I swear to God. Second thing I wanted to say is there's a jump scare at the end of this video. Remember it or don't, that's on you. See ya! Hello everybody, welcome back to another Nerdiversal video on the sacred month of Halloween. For today's video, as you can see by the title, we are going to be doing some spooky games that you can play this October. As you can see, I've dug up this book of games that is sacred and scary, not from Walmart. And I'm going to be reading from this book to describe the scary games that all have high risk and high reward. Although some of them kind of have a higher risk than they have a higher reward. That's just kind of par for the course for these. They don't outweigh the consequences. Play them at your own risk. I will also be carrying my special ancient tome with me. Bunny girl senpai. It's not, listen, she's not my waifu. It's nothing sexual, she just looks cool, you weird motherfuckers. She will be lighting the way through these games. Let's begin. We will now begin with the testing game. According to the site Ghost in My Machine, this ritual comes from Indonesian and Malaysian sites dating back to about 2014. I did try finding these myself, but all I found was a Christian site that was like how to summon the Holy Spirit, and it was like, well, he's in the air you breathe. And I was like, okay, that's not what I'm looking for, but thank you. Here's what you will need for this ritual. A dark room, free of noise and distraction. You need to be alone. The instructions for this game are also fairly simple. First, Sit in your dark room and close your eyes. Imagine your childhood home, somewhere you have a lot of memories attached to. You'll begin a detailed walkthrough of this space, starting with the outside of it. Recount all the details that you can. How many doors does it have? How many windows? What colors are they? Are there plants? Next, you'll begin walking through every one of the rooms of the space. Recount every detail about these rooms as well. Like what color are the rooms? What are they used for? More importantly, who or what? is there. Complete this task for each and every space in your home, making note of every person or entity in this room. When you've finished, open your eyes. Here are your results. If you saw no one, you are not sensitive to spirits. If you saw friends or family, you are somewhat sensitive to spirits. You catch their wisps and bumps, but not much else. If you saw someone who has passed, you are sensitive to spirits, but you don't necessarily attract them. Finally, if you see something inhuman, a shadow, maybe an unfamiliar silhouette, you are highly sensitive to spirits. Refrain from revisiting the rooms you saw these entities in. They may have seen you back and they will not be happy. Back hurts. Ah, oh, fuck. Next is the Sachiko Ever After Charm. This one is actually really near and dear to my heart. I've actually done this one before with my friends. Me and one of my other friends were huge fans of Corpse Party, and so we decided we would partake in this. And wouldn't you know, we're all still friends years later. And I didn't get sent to Heavenly Host, so that's great news. The ritual comes from an RPG game, as I said, titled Corpse Party, released in about 2008. The lore states that a young girl named Sachiko went missing 30 years ago and still wanders the earth with the power to grant wishes. Here's what you will need to play. A white paper Sachiko doll, which you can find the pattern for on Online, and I will also have it in this video if you wanted to screenshot that and print that out. And you need at least two participants. Participants will form a circle around the paper doll and take hold to a section of it. You will repeat the phrase, Sachiko, we beg of you, one time for each participant and once more for Sachiko. The amount of times you say this is very, very important. You may also say this in your head rather than out loud, but I would not recommend it. It's probably a little bit harder to keep track of the amount of times that it's said. After chanting, Grip the paper tight and pull. Each participant should have a piece of paper. Now here are your results. If you perform the ritual correctly, you'll be granted an eternal friendship with those you participated in the ritual with. If you performed it incorrectly, perhaps someone chanted one too many times or flubbed a syllable, you will be transported to an alternate dimension within the long gone Heavenly Host Elementary School. There, you may face unspeakable horrors, gruesomely murdered bodies, spirits of past participants, and should you die in this dimension, you will feel the pain of your death for all eternity, and those in the living world will forget you ever existed. The only way to escape this is rejoin your piece of paper with the surviving participants and redo the chant correctly. That sounded funny when I said correctly. If you've lost your piece, you may never return. Um, number three, Sakurokan. This ritual comes from Japan. While it's not known how long ago it came about, it gained popularity around 2011. This might be a harder or impossible game to play if you live in an area that's gotten rid of all of its payphones, which is quite a lot of places these days. Most places don't have payphones. It centers around a red-eyed demon that takes the form of a young boy. It's said that he knows the past, 
present, and future, so he can answer any question. Here's what you'll need. A mobile phone, preferably a burner, a payphone, coins or a calling card, though coins are said to have more of an effect, and a question you desperately need answered. Do not perform this ritual without one. Here's how you play. There are no time requirements for this. Go to your nearest payphone and dial the number to your burner phone. When it begins to ring, chant this phrase. Satoru Satoru, please come to me. Satoru Satoru, please show yourself. Satoru Satoru, please answer me. Listen, I'm a weeaboo. I don't pronounce Japanese words correctly and I'm very sorry if I butchered that. Please forgive me, I'm begging you. How well you say it might have an effect. Um, I hope not. A lot of Americans gonna be dead from that one. Hang up the payphone, then turn off your burner phone, then go about your day. If you don't receive a call within 24 hours, the ritual has failed and you can try again later. Otherwise, you'll be getting a call from someone or something stating how close they are to you. They will speak slowly. This is Satoruken. He will continue to call, getting closer and closer until the final call when he tells you he's right behind you. Do not turn around. Quickly ask him your question. Do not waste time. Do not ask another question. Thanks, Satoru. Then hang up. Don't turn around. Destroy the burner phone and do not turn around until you feel his presence is completely gone. Now, here are your results. If you perform this ritual correctly, you will now have your question answered. If you performed it incorrectly, maybe you turned to look at him, or you didn't have a question prepared. Satoru will drag your hell. <laughs> Satoru will drag your soul to hell to burn for an eternity. Also, this ritual has shows tied to it. If that's something you guys were interested in at all, I thought that was super interesting. They have like storylines and stuff. So I will link that in the description below. Number four, Three Kings Ritual. This one is actually fairly popular. I've heard it in quite a bit of places, but the first time I heard it really scared the hell out of me. So I figured if that's not something you guys have seen before, I think it's really interesting. This originates on a subreddit titled r slash no sleep on a post titled, please don't actually try this made in 2012. The subreddit focuses on telling scary stories. However, there are also users claiming to have done the ritual and gotten results both negative and positive. The needs list for this is fairly hefty. Here's what you'll need, a large, quiet and empty room with covered windows to ensure total darkness, a pack of candles and a lighter, a bucket of water and a mug, a fan, two large mirrors, three chairs, an alarm clock, a fully charged phone, or at least one that is near fully charged, someone you implicitly trust, and a sentimental trinket, preferably a childhood toy. Here's how you play. Start setting up around 11 p.m. as you will need ample time to finish the setup and then go to sleep. Place one chair in the room facing north. Place your other two chairs to the left and right of your first chair. The distance between your throne and the queen and fool's throne should be the length of your arm to each side. Place the mirror on the queen and fool's throne facing each other and you at the same time, so at an angle. Place the bucket of water and the mug just barely out of reach in front of you. Place the fan behind you and turn it to medium or low. Turn the lights off, leave the door open, and then go to your bedroom. Set your candles, the lighter, the alarm clock, which is set to 3.30 a.m., and your cell phone by the side of your bed. Hold your trinket anywhere on you, then sleep. Which, in my opinion, I think would be a little bit hard. I don't know, I would be too spooked by this to sleep, but you're supposed to. Very important, so I would try. I mean, that's if you crazy motherfuckers are gonna do these. I imagine if you're crazy enough to do it, you probably get some sleep out of this. Now, when your alarm chimes, turn your alarm off, but don't turn on the light. You have three minutes to light your candle, grab your cell phone, drink it, and then sit at your throne. Now, a serious warning for those who are playing. If your alarm didn't go off at the specified time, or your phone didn't charge, or the throne room is closed, or the fan you left on is off, abort the mission. Evacuate everyone in the house and do not return until 6 a.m. It will not be safe until then. The trusted person that I told you to have earlier is going to wait outside of the room while you complete this ritual. It's imperative that they are trusted because you will want to make sure that they do not fall asleep and are able to wake you when the time comes. You must be seated for the ritual by 3.33. If not, again, evacuate everybody in the house and do not return until 6 a.m. Never, and I mean never, look into the mirrors you placed and do not let the candle go out. Shield it from the fan with your body. Look straight ahead into the darkness, again, not at the mirrors. The ritual will be over at 434, no more and no less. The fan should hit your candle and blow it out, ending the ritual. If this doesn't work, there are four other options and you must try them out one at a time before you can try the next. The next thing you can do, your loved one will go into the room and call your name. If that does not work, your loved one will call your cell phone that you've had. If that does not work, they can splash water on you with the mug and water bucket. They must not touch you. 
I couldn't find exactly what happens if they break this rule, but judging by the rest of the ritual and its consequences, I can't imagine it would be anything good. Now, if none of those work, your trinket is your last resort. The thing that you've held onto while you were sleeping and the thing you've had through the ritual should be able to help you find the way out if everything goes wrong. Now, here are your results. This ritual is supposed to be for getting your questions answered. However, according to the users who have participated, results vary pretty greatly. Some have positive experiences akin to something like therapy, but even if you do it all correctly, the results still seem to be a mixed bag. Some reported that their entities attacked their past traumas and doubts. This is why it is very, very important to be in a good mental state if you play this game, which I imagine would disqualify many people. One user, according to Morbid Podcast, which I would highly recommend, states that a user said that when they were talking to the Queen and the Fool, that one was being very mean and the other one was being very nice. However, when she turned to look at the mirror where the nice voice was coming from, it tricked her. It showed her indescribable horrors, her family dying, the world burning, and then left her off with a very cryptic message about her death. Final ritual number five, man in the fields ritual. This ritual comes from the OG of cryptic internet lore, Creepypasta. It states that the entity you summon is an ancient pagan deity and can grant rewards for those who successfully complete the ritual. Here's what you will need for the ritual. Only one participant, a house with a backyard, preferably in a remote location as this seems to have more success in attracting the deity, a non-electric source of light like a candle or a lantern or a match, a crucifix, an analog watch or clock, digital ones will not work for this, and you also need an empty room in this house that only has one one door. Here's how you play. Begin after sunset, but before midnight. The amount of time between start and midnight will have an effect on rewards. With the crucifix on you, clear the house and yard of people. Light your candle or lantern and go to the backyard and turn to face your house. Repeat this phrase seven times, but who will scare the crows away? When you finish chanting, listen closely. If you don't hear anything, your summoning has failed. Leave the premises and do not return until after 6 a.m. Seems to be a recurring thing. I don't know what's up with 6 a.m. I don't know if that's when the witching three hours ends, but that's the time they all want you out. If you hear a voice and it says, that's not your biggest problem. Your summon has succeeded. You may proceed. Return to your house. Careful not to look back as you close the door. Go to the empty room with only one door and close everything that might be open. This is imperative. This is going to be your safe room and you want it to be safe of any potential openings. Then you're going to leave the crucifix in this room. This will be where you go just in case shit hits the fan. Continue carrying your light source and exit the room. Now you have until 12 a.m. to close every single thing in the house. If you see a man with ashen skin, in your peripheral, do not look at him. There's no need to fear him. He's kind of a referee of sorts. Do not, and I mean do not, look into the backyard. When you're certain, absolutely certain, that you have closed everything, you now need to go to bed. Again, if you're a crazy motherfucker that does this, I imagine you'll get some shut-eye. That was unnecessary. You scared the shit out of me. What was that for? My cat just fucking started spooking at some shit. I'm already scared, man. I'm already scared. You don't need to do that. If you wake up in the morning, congratulations, you won, and your prizes are as follows. If you completed the ritual three hours before midnight, you will be granted physical safety for one year. No illness and no injury will come to you in this year. Now, if you perform the ritual two hours before midnight, you will be granted physical and financial safety. So you'll be in good physical health for the year and you'll be financially comfortable one hour before midnight. Now, one hour before midnight, which is said to be almost impossible and is really not recommended, you'll be granted total safety for one year. Your actions will have no negative consequences in any way. Good as those may sound, the consequences are, well, terrible. If you should ignore the warnings to look outside and see the scarecrow man, he will see you too. You will see him crawl down from his post and you must sprint to your safe room and close the door, grasping your crucifix tightly. Now remember, if you failed to close everything in this safe room, he can enter and he will I mean, he's gonna brutally murder you. And if you didn't close everything before you went to bed or before 12 a.m. I mean, he's gonna brutally murder you. Which personally, I don't think financial health is that worth it, but maybe, I don't know, you're dying and you're sick. This might be a good option for you to play. And then you can prolong your sickness for like a year. Also, I was thinking to myself, you might just wanna play in a completely empty house. This way it would kind of reduce the number of unnecessary openings that you're gonna have to close. I saw some people mention that water bottles would need to be closed, maybe even vents, although that one wasn't really clear, but I mean, if you're messing with an ancient deity, you might wanna be a little bit careful. All right, everybody, so that was five spooky games that you can play this Halloween. I hope you guys like content like this. It kind of is the only thing that seems to scare me these days is these spooky rituals. I don't know why something... Did you say, what the fuck, dude?
I'm not doing this. Dude, what the fuck? 